Back in high school, I worked as a watch repair technician. True story. It was a quiet little nook in the corner of a large mall retail store. It was a great job. Lots of tinkering. Lots of time to do homework. (laughs) One time, I pieced together all of the extra pieces of the watch bands we had lying around. (laughs) Good times. Anyway, (laughs) I did hate one time of year, though. Yep, you guessed it. Daylight savings time. Getting all of the clocks we had on the wall of the shop all set to the correct time, cuckoos and everything, was not an easy task. (laughs) And it just won't do to have the clocks at a clock shop be out of sync. Now would it? Now here I am with my latest design, and it feels like daylight savings time all over again. I've got way too many clocks in my design, and they all need to be sorted out. Great. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today we're going to look at some cool one-time programmable clock generators from On Semiconductor that may solve my clock problems for good. My guest is Eduardo de Reza, and well, let's talk about clocks. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about On Semiconductor's one-time programmable OmniClock generators. Hi, Eduardo. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's great being here. Thanks for having me. Okay, so my designs these days are requiring a lot of different clocks, and I'm having trouble getting the right frequencies. And frankly, Eduardo, it's getting kind of messy. Is there a device you would recommend to help me out? That's a great question. On Semiconductor has a new family of OmniClock generators that could totally help you out in this situation. OmniClock generators are extremely flexible, one-time programmable PLL-based clock generators. But before we move on, let's review some of the key terms I just mentioned. One-time programmable means that the device's internal memory can only be written once. A clock generator is a device that accepts a crystal or a reference clock as its input and can generate one or more output clock signals. The OmniClock generators can generate up to three single-ended outputs or one single-ended and one differential output using its on-chip PLL. Okay. PLL stands for phase lock loop, which is closed loop feedback control system. A PLL generates an output clock signal that is locked in phase and frequency to its input signal. Okay, cool. So, what does that buy me? Let's start off with the flexibility of our device. We can fully program output frequency, output type, output voltage, device voltage, and drive strength. Due to our high flexibility, our device can fit into several systems and easily be integrated due to our free software that can program our devices. Cool, okay. Secondly, we can supply up to three single-ended output clocks and a 2x2 WDFN8 or a 3x3 QFN16 device. This combines up to three crystal oscillators into one of our two small package options to save board space and reduce board complexity. Excellent. Next, our device consumes minimal power combined with individual output enable pins that disable output clocks for low power modes. With these power savings, portable consumer devices can run much longer. Excellent. Lastly, our devices come with a fully customizable spread spectrum engine, including type, deviation, and rate. Board designers can address system EMI picking issues on the fly with our device. Very cool. So, Eduardo, what kind of applications are we talking about here? Sure. The OmniClock generator can fit into multiple applications. So in computing, it can fit into VGA cards, set-top boxes, and multifunction printers. In automotive, multimedia, and infotainment, our devices can fit into audio amplifiers and car radios. In portable applications, handheld electronics, smartphones, media players, and e-books. Cool. And in industrial, security cameras, machine vision, and automation devices. All right, so what really sets these OmniClocks apart from other clock solutions? Our device has more features in a single device than any other similar device available on the market today. Okay. Flexibility, flexibility, flexibility. I don't know how many more times I could say our part is extremely flexible. Okay. Low power and low cost. In addition to these key competitive advantages, we can increase system reliability. With our device, we have a fit rate of 6.89 over systems using discrete signals where their fit rate may be 30. Okay. Our output frequencies are locked to the same input, either a reference clock or a crystal. 
Hence, to each other, there is no extra relationship over discrete crystals. Okay. One device can replace several devices in order to simplify a bomb. And we have shorter lead times in crystals, especially compared to crystals running at non-standard frequencies. And for any of our OmniClock devices, we have the same lead time, regardless of output frequencies and configurations. Okay. Let's discuss the two different packages you can get with an OmniClock generator. Okay. Let's focus right now on the 3x3 QFN16 device. This is the full feature device that has individual output enable pins, which allow you to independently enable and disable each output to minimize power when these certain outputs are not required. It also has individual output voltage pins, effectively making this device a level translator, where each output clock can have a different level if the supply voltage is 3.3 volts. Okay. It also has two select pins, allowing the user to switch between four configurations on the fly. For instance, a user might want to define a normal operation configuration and a low power configuration. Or perhaps a user might want to define a configuration with no spread spectrum and one to three other configurations with a different spread spectrum profile. Another possibility is to use the same device on a different board where a completely different configuration would be used on separate systems. Okay, cool. The WDFN8 version is ideal for applications where size is very critical and where a single configuration is sufficient and where individual output enable pins and individual output voltage pins are not required. Okay, so you said programmable. What kind of stuff can I program? Sure. So some of the key things that we can program are alpha frequencies. So our alpha frequency ranges between 8 kilohertz to 200 megahertz max. Okay. Secondly, we have our spread spectrum engine. We have center spread from plus or minus 0.125% to plus or minus 3% in 0.125% steps. We also have a down spread option that goes from negative 0.25% to negative 4% in 0.25% steps with the modulation rate between 30 kilohertz to 130 kilohertz. Thirdly, we can program internal input crystal load capacitors. And lastly, we can program output drive current. So what kind of flavors of this Omni clock do you have? You can see the full list of current available devices in this table. As you can see, we have devices with 2.5 volt and 3.3 volt supply voltages, but also carry a 1.8 volt option. Okay. So if I wanted to get started right away, have you got an eval board you can throw my way? Of course we do. We have an evaluation kit supporting both packages available for purchase, which includes three blank samples of the 2.5 volt, 3.3 volt supply voltage device and three blank samples of our 1.8 volt device. Cool. The evaluation kit can be used to program the devices and can also be used to test most of the features and functionality of the devices like output frequency, spread spectrum, etc. The evaluation kit is not meant to test jitter performance. Other evaluation boards are available via our marketing applications team for such measurements. Okay, so can you give me a rundown on the input and output situation here? Yeah, sure. On the input side, you can either use a crystal on the daughter card or supply an external clock reference to either the daughter or the main board. All three outputs are available on both the daughter and the main board. There are also switches on the main board allowing you to configure the supply voltage and the output voltages. Okay, so I think I get the board, but how do I go about programming this programmable thing? There's a free downloadable software tool available on our website called Clock Cruiser, which can be used with or without our evaluation kit. It allows you to independently define each of the four configurations. For each configuration, it allows you to define the input interface, whether you will use a crystal or a reference clock, the input frequency, whether or not spread spectrum will be used, and if so, what type, deviation and rate, the output type, whether differential or single-ended outputs, the output frequency, the drive strength for single-ended outputs, and the single-ended output disable state. Once all the parameters are set to the user's liking, the user can hit the solve button to generate solutions. The automatic solver will generate up to 16 unique solutions. Oh cool, I get some options. There's no default solution? No, actually this is a unique feature available only with on semiconductor programmable clocks. Cool. All other supplies provide a single solution. The user can then select the solution that most closely fits his requirements for frequency, accuracy, or PPM error, device current estimation, and or relative phase jitter. Solutions will typically use different VCO and charge pump settings, thus generating solutions requiring more or less power. Okay, so I decided on what option I want. Eduardo, what do I do now? Sure. Once you have selected the solution that best fits your requirements, you can proceed to the programming screen. If there is an evaluation kit connected, you will be able to write your configuration to the registers or program the device's OTP memory. 
Note that the OTP memory can only be written once. Ah, okay. The registers, on the other hand, can be written as often as desired. In fact, when in normal operation, the device loads one of the configurations saved in the OTP memory into the registers. The device then runs based on content of those registers. When an evaluation kit is connected, the software can write directly into the registers without writing the OTP memory. Ah, okay. This is particularly useful when debugging different configurations. Sure. Writing directly to the registers effectively keeps the devices blank. Gotcha. So now I figured out how to design one device. What if I want more? How do I design this into my whole solution? Sure. Let's review the design and flow for an Omniclock generator. If you want an evaluation kit, you can purchase one. Then with our freely downloadable Clock Cruiser software, you can configure and program devices and run tests. Once you are happy with your configuration file, you can send us your configuration file and we will review it for you. Then we will generate a custom part number that you can order directly and your parts will ship pre-programmed and ready to be soldered down to your system board. Cool. So what if I don't want to evaluate the device? Can I just send you the files and specifications? Sure, if you feel like you do not need to test our device VR evaluation kit, you can use the software as a standalone tool to define your configuration. The rest of the design and flow remains unchanged. Very cool. So earlier you mentioned some application areas. Now that I understand the part, uh, what kind of applications are we talking about here? Sure, let's review some examples. First part we'll talk about is the NB3H63143G, which is our QFN16 device in a 3.3 volt environment. We have this device set up for an industrial control plane application. As you can see, the device can generate three unique frequencies required by the application using a low cost 25 megahertz crystal. Now we will take a look at the NB3V63143G, which is the QFN16 device, but in a 1.8 volt environment. Okay. This is more likely suitable for portable applications like a tablet. In this example, the device is using a low-cost 12 MHz crystal to generate three clocks, where plus or minus 0.5% spread spectrum is applied on all the outputs in order to reduce EMI picking. In this example, we are using the NB3H60113G, which is our WDFN8 in a 3.3 volt environment, used for set-top box applications to generate differential HCSL clock for PCI Express, and a single-ended 25 megahertz used for Ethernet. Okay. In our final example, we are using the NB3V60113G, which is our WDFN8 1.8 volt supply voltage device. This device is used for low power, small form factor, cost sensitive smart wearable applications. In this example, two of the output clocks are copies of the input reference, labeled here ref out, and one of the output is using the PLL to include spread spectrum modulation. This can be useful when spread spectrum is not permitted on some clock signals, for instance. Okay. So, Eduardo, can you recap your main points for me? Sure. In summary, we would like to highlight the fact that OmniClock generators are easy to use due to our evaluation kit and free clock cruiser software, which make prototyping extremely easy. That they are extremely flexible, integrating more features into one device than any other device in the current market, are suitable for low power application, especially with our 1.8 volt supply voltage devices, and they are suitable for cost sensitive applications. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Eduardo. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Likewise. Before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out more information about On Semiconductor's one-time programmable Omni-Clock generators. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out the On Demand section of eejournal.com or head on over to YouTube, keyword eejournal.